Welcome back to the Victory Podcast. I'm your host, Steve McGrath, and this week I'm pleased to bring you my conversation with Houston Miller. Now, Houston just decided to declare for the NFL draft, which means he will forego his senior season at Texas Tech, and he's going to enter early. Now, a lot goes into a decision like that, so Houston took the time to break down what he was thinking. He also reflected on what the last four years were like in Lubbock, and also we talked about some of the big things that will be coming no matter what with his degree that he has in sports management, some brand ideas he has with Chalk em Up, but before we get into all of that, I need to remind you all that we are brought to you by Team Builder. And Team Builder works with over 500 high school football programs nationwide, as well as the NFL and colleges. So if you're looking for more information about weightlifting programs, check them out, show them some love, use the promo code VICTORY, and you're going to get a free gift. Now, without any further ado, here's my conversation with Houston. I am pleased to welcome Houston Miller, the recent former Texas Tech player who is now declared to go to the NFL. Houston, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Steve? I'm doing phenomenal. Thanks for asking. Uh, so, Houston, I, I got to jump right into, you know, you making this decision to declare to go pro. Of course, you had another year of eligibility that you're choosing to forego. What goes into a decision like that, man? I'm, I'm sure you, you kind of have to really weigh all your options, but you, you took the jump. So can you walk us through it? Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of things that went into it, and it was a, it was a really fun process. I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was, kind of, it was obviously very stressful at times, but there was a couple ways that I looked at it, and it was like, one, it starts off, I graduated a year ago, or in last May, with my bachelor's degree in sport management and my minor in communications, so I was a three-year graduate here at Texas Tech. Now, that's really great. Uh, I've been on scholarships since I got here, and it was going into, like, I was thinking I wanted I was wanting for something bigger, so I played this last season, and I know why I stayed here this last season. I wanted to get in a groove, stayed with the new staff. It was a good deal, and then it's just coming off of this season. I was preparing myself mentally. I was just thinking I'm ready for a new challenge, and a lot of people will look at this decision and kind of, they'll 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 scratch their head at it, which I understand. People don't necessarily know my story, and so it's something that I was like. I'm ready for this new challenge. I'm ready to go forward and I'm ready to go figure out what I can do, what I can accomplish and what I can conquer. And going forward is just, I didn't want to transfer anywhere else. I didn't want to go play another year somewhere else. I already had my degree. And then it was a matter of, I, I felt the, I felt the urge that I was ready to move on to a new challenge and I was ready to take what football is ready to throw at me. Got it. And I mean, circumstances certainly can sound, uh, you know, force your hand a little bit into what you want to do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you see like someone like Jerry Judy declare to go pro, it's like, oh, okay, well, he's accomplished so much. So, you know, to Correct. play devil's advocate here, you know, if mm -hmm. a, a coach or a GM in the NFL is like, well, you know, Houston, you didn't really put up the, the numbers while you were at Texas Tech. Why should we even look at you? I, I mean, how do you defend yourself and answer that? And so one of the things, like, looking at it, a lot of people don't realize a lot of my stats came from non-stat counting things. Like, I, I'm a defensive player on the roster, but a lot of everything I did was blocking. I had probably over 30 pancake blocks just putting people on their back, running through people's faces, making blocks on special teams and anywhere I can block somebody. But they didn't count those blocks. Like, that's not like me. It's like an offensive lineman creating a hole. You don't get a, you don't get a stat for that, you know. You get stats for tackles, batted balls, interceptions, but you don't get stats for making the hole for a run it, uh, or someone to get through the hole and gain 50 more yards because you made a key block. And so my stats, I mean, it's, I, I've, I've looked at a lot of the articles and everything that says stuff. It says Houston Miller defensive end. Well, I haven't really ever played defensive end here. Uh, initially, when I got here, I've had three different – over the course of my football career here, I've had three different coaches look at me when I weighed 250, 245 and say I need to put on 65 pounds to become a nose guard. Whenever I'm athletic enough, I run four or five. I, I can move. I can jump 36. And it's like I, I power clean 353. Like I'm a strong athletic guy. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lower my standard on how I believe in myself. But I was like, I don't think I think there's something else you can think to do with a guy that's six four and two fifty instead of telling him to put on sixty five pounds or sixty pounds to become a nose guard. When I have other athletic abilities, a tight end, outside linebacker, middle linebacker, anywhere I can be moved. So a lot of my stats don't necessarily come from tackles. I've had a few tackles in my career. That's great. And I, I did what I could to get to that point or to make those tackles, make those plays. But going for what I was doing, going or coming from what I was doing, 
it was a matter of I was making plays to help other guys. And everything I did was trying to help the team and help the team succeed. And so that's why I'm really trying to press to everybody to understand that I'm, I'm here for the team. I'm here to help everyone. And it's just a matter of maybe I didn't have a luxurious career on paper, but helping my teammates play and helping in the games, I did have a very luxurious career. Yeah, yeah, and it's tough, right, to, to be in that position where you're you're not putting up the numbers, but you're on there and you feel like you're doing a really good job. But, I, I mean, how do you – I don't want to ask do you have any regrets because I don't want to frame it that way, but, like, how do you feel to look at, like, the last four years of Texas Tech and not being able to have uh, really been able to actually play defensive end? I mean, does that sort of eat at you or do you just sort of take it, you know what it is, what it is, I kind of, you know – Gonna... I mean, I'll, I'll be a little. I mean, I'm a religious guy. I'm, I'm, I'm Catholic. I was raised Catholic. I, I believe in God. I'm religious, and I understand that God kind of has a path for everybody. I mean, I have, I have a. I don't know if y'all, if you've seen pictures of me online or on my Twitter or my Instagram or anything. That I have a pair of angel wings that are my tattoo. That's on my one of my tattoos. And uh, it's a matter of I believe God kind of He gives everyone a gift, and you have to figure out what your gift is, and you have to spread your wings, and you have to spread your gift with everybody else I mean there's more to the story but uh I think that you know I don't have any regrets because I came here to do what I was supposed to do this is what was God's path for me and who am I to rewrite God's plan and so going forward I was just thinking I was like or like looking back at everything I just think about I had fun here it, this is somewhere I wanted to come since uh since I got the offer here when I was in high school and I remember I committed June 13th here and uh in 2015 and it was it was a place I wanted to come it was a place that I could call home it's a place I always call home I spent four good years here I got a degree which is priceless considering I have no student debt which is great <laughs> but I look back at everything I've done here and it's you know I've made great relationships I've had a lot of fun and even on the field if, if it always hasn't gone your way that's fine everyone's gonna face some adversity and I mean I'll, I'll quote even our, our defensive coordinator our current one uh, Keith Patterson good coach and he always says there's no such thing as adversity on the football field he goes there's highs and lows and swings of emotion and I, I, I thought about that I was like you know that makes sense because I mean we're, we're getting to play a game we're getting to have fun we're getting to do this if we're if you're on scholarship you're essentially getting paid to do this by your school and everything like that so what kind of adversity are you are you facing other than you know you have to fight for something that you want in a sense of you're having to fight for playing time you have to compete against the guy next to you it's not like you or having to fight like a major illness or fight like losing an arm or something like something brutal like that, that people do every day. That stuff happens. So I don't look at anything with a regret. I just look at it as, you know, if there were some things I could have done differently here and there, maybe some different things I could have approached or tried to give myself an opportunity at a different position, different, uh, different look on the field that I could do or something I could provide differently for the team, then I wish I could have been able to do that. But I look back at it, I'm happy with what I've done. Obviously, everyone wants to have a luxurious career. I had a luxurious career in a different way that people don't understand, and that's fine. Got it. Now, it, you kind of talked about maybe having approached some things differently, trying different things, and, of course, we know you know what you've done in special teams. So mm -hmm. moving forward, how do you sort of train to prepare for, you know, not just the pro day, but any sort of workouts? Um, mm -hmm. You know, what do you sort of put as, like, the number one – you know, focus for trying to like, okay, well, like I might have to play defensive end, but like maybe if I switch to like a fullback, tight end, H back, mm -hmm. you know, so how do you just prepare? Oh, uh, I mean, I have a, I have a phenomenal trainer. His name's Kyle Meadows and uh, he's in Atlanta, Buckhead, Atlanta. And I'll be training with him. He, I've known him for years prior to even coming to Texas Tech. The guy, uh, he lived in Fort Worth where I lived near Keller. And it was, it was it's a funny story. I met the guy, his, he met my mom. My mom asked him to train me. It's funny he didn't like me at first. And so the first couple workouts, he tried to he tried to obliterate me and just get me to stop because he didn't think he, he wanted to try to push me to see if he if I could do it. One because he didn't like me, but then he 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 starts he loves me now. But uh, we so I met him. I started training and we've gone over a lot of different things like how we're and that was prior to even coming into college. It was a matter of getting me to college, and you know I had to I had to run. A, a crazy 40 I had to make a crazy jump I had to do a good insane pro agility and prove myself that my tape backs up on my speed and my agility 
back and forth. They do the same thing. It's like if I can supply my – or I can show my power in my body that I have being a large frame, but also athletic and nimble, that was the goal. And so coming out of college, going there, I met with him uh, for a meeting the other day in Atlanta just to just go over things. And he, he was he was smiling as I was working out with a couple other, couple other guys that were in there that are training – and uh, for the NFL right now. And then Darren Waller came in and Mohamed Sanu came in. So that's pretty cool. That I'll be able to work out with some of them, doing some some route running, some stuff like that, be able to prepare myself for that technique stuff. But Kyle started, we go, started going through drills. And Kyle was like, you haven't lost a step. He goes, you're about the same as you were when you left. And I was running four or five before I left to come to college. And so right now it's a matter of just seeing my tape and then showing that I am a – player that can do a lot of different things my athletic ability shows on my 40 my pro agility my uh, and then my on-field drills so realist and then my bench press I'm I'm shoot, I'm trying to get 30 reps that's that's the plan 30 reps on bench press and make a statement with that that I'm a guy that can do anything and so just overall pushing myself at my 40 my bench my pro agility and having just insane numbers got it uh, well, it certainly seems like you have a plan. And uh, again, I hope everything sort of continues to come together for you uh, as you right. try to sort of prepare to do all these different types of things, not knowing, you know, eventually what you might be asked to do. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, what I wanted to get into, though, was just your decision to go to Texas Tech, because to, to walk this mm -hmm. back to when you were in high school, I mean, you're a you know, class 6A, all state first team. I, I mean, Dallas Fort Worth, mm -hmm. you know, defensive player of the year. I, I mean, you had mm -hmm. accolades coming out of Texas, which is a no joke high school, you know, football uh, state. Yeah. What's yes, that sir. path to Texas Tech look like? Because, I mean, I'm sure you had a bunch of other offers out there. I mean, I, I know I saw, you know, BC, Duke, Iowa. You know, who knows if, you know, you ever had Baylor or Texas, Texas A&M in the mix. Yeah, I, I had a lot of them looking. Uh, I think I, I pulled the trigger on Tech before any of them would ever, before any of them got to me saying anything like that, if they were going to. But, uh, you know, in high school, yeah, I did have a very, I had a very luxurious high school career. I had a lot of accolades. And uh, coming out of high school, that was one when Mike Smith was recruiting me to come here. And me and Mike Smith, we had a, we had a phenomenal relationship. I still talk to Coach Smith here and there uh, whenever I get the chance. But I understand he's busy. He's been doing a lot of different things. And so let him take care of that. But uh, me and him had a great relationship. But one of the things coming here, I mean, it's five hours away from my house in Keller, Fort Worth. Uh, and everywhere else would have been a great place. We visited Duke. We visited all these other schools and had good times at them. But it was just one of the things that Lubbock has was that it's, it had a different feel for me. I had a different connection come to the city. And it's just every time I came to the city, every time I visited with Coach Smith and Coach Kingsbury, it was it was always a good, fun time to be around. And even whenever I did get here, Coach Kingsbury was always great to be around, always took care of business, always had fun, always be, was able to make everything fun for everybody whenever there were things that you didn't necessarily want to do. Like when, when the days were hot and you weren't wanting to go out there, it's 110 degrees here in flat Lubbock. But <laughs> – but the thing is, I, I love I love the city. I knew I wanted to come here one because I knew I wanted to get my education here. I knew that they had the program I wanted to uh, pursue, so I got my degree in sport management, and I'm really excited. I, I, I'm really excited to one day utilize that degree with my minor in communications and put that out to I mean one day in the job fields, and because I feel like that that's a very unique degree. Some places have sport management degrees, some places don't. And then there's a lot of jobs that look for experience in sport management and stuff like that and having a having pretty much a focus. It's like a business degree, but solely in sports. So it's pretty unique. I knew I wanted to do that. And so coming here, I committed here a year early prior to my senior season of high school. Went through my senior season and signed uh, February 3rd. And it was just, I was, going, I was, I was excited. Uh, one of the things that happened, it was Coach Smith got fired by Coach Gibbs. And I understood that that happened a month before I signed to Texas Tech. And then they brought in a new coach, and that's fine. I was like, you know, coaches do that. I mean, Mike Smith wanted to stay here as much as he could, and he wanted to be here. There was, uh, yeah, whatever happened, happened. But I was like, you know, I, I still wanted to come here. I still wanted to play ball here. And, I mean, if I, it, it, people could say he could have gone to Duke and had 500 apples, or he could have gone to wherever and play tight end or whatever. I think Iowa even looked at – I think that's why Iowa offered me. So they wanted me to play tight end. Because I've been told I have a Big Ten body for a tight end, even though I'm two inches shorter than most of their tight ends. But 
Uh, so, I, but I still knew I wanted to come here and have my degree here, and I wanted to make everlasting memories and impacts and connections here. And so that's that's kind of pursuing my goal here is come here, get my education, and play football. I love the game, and just see where it takes me from there. And everybody has a different route, and so you just got to figure out your route. For sure, and, and that's that's great, man. Um, but yeah, you mentioned Coach Kingsbury. Um, you know, you've had, you know, a pretty crazy four-year run. For a second, let's just look at his last four years to go from the Texas Tech coach, you know, and he was always on the radar as being a, a really sharp offensive mind. But now, of course, he's a head coach in the NFL. Just from having worked so closely with him for a few years, what is it about him, his approach, what he's doing? What can you look at him and say, oh, this is what he's doing and this is why he's successful? He's very innovative. He comes up with something different every week. Uh, here's the past three years, whenever he was here, every week, uh, like as a true freshman when I redshirted, obviously you do scout team. I mean, Pete, and that was that was one of the difficulties for me to learn whenever I first got here was <laughs> scout team whenever I redshirted. I didn't know I was going to redshirt. I mean, that's kind of that was kind of the start of a lot of crazy things that I didn't I didn't know what was going on. But we can get into that later. But uh. Whenever I did scout team as a redshirt freshman, or when I was redshirting, there was always something different. There was a different play. There was different things he saw in defensive players that he could exploit, and he'd make it apparent. And he came up with different things each week, and maybe you didn't run them, maybe you did run them, but then he always had something in his back pocket. And or, I mean, I was watching an Arizona Cardinals game, and he uh, he had two line, running backs lined up right next to each other, next to Kyler. And he did like this – I don't know. I can't remember how he did it, but it was like fake the first handoff and uh, the Statue of Liberty, the second handoff, but to the same side. I was like, that's that's different. You don't see that. You usually see him coming around the side. But I'm like, you know, it's very unique. He, he's he's very smart guy. He's, he knows everything. That, he knows what he's doing. He knows how to exploit defenses. And it's just really fun to be around him. He takes care of a lot – he takes care of business too. He's a fun coach. Good guy to be around, but he also takes care of business and says, this is how we're going to do something. This is how we're going to accomplish something. And he put down the groundwork and you follow. Got it. Uh, well, I, I mean, I, I can't avoid this elephant in the room. You say that uh, talking about the right charts uh, with a lot of craziness and stuff that you didn't see coming. I mean, can you unpack <laughs> that a little bit? I mean, how did you find about the red shirt and just sort of oh. <laughs> what, what unfolded from there? Yeah, no, it, it, was, it was a pretty unique story. So, I mean, I, I – Coming into college, you, you don't necessarily know what's going on sometimes. It's kind of funny because coaches sure, will sure. – they'll have their first practice and everyone else knows where to go except for the freshmen because it's our first practice. And so they're yelling to go to different drills and stuff like that. So we're all just going to different drills trying to figure out what we're doing. And I'm getting different play- – and th- at this point in time, the D-line coach was Kevin Patrick. And C- Coach Gibbs was there. We had the staff there. But we go through the practice we – or we start going through uh, fall camp. And I'm still being slayed to play the first game. Or from my knowledge, I'm still being slayed to play the first game. That's what I've been told. That's what I was getting reps in. I was getting reps in with the twos at different – like they had a Raider kind of, but they then they started moving me inward uh, to detackle a nose and different stuff like that. And I, was still, I was still lighter then. But they weren't telling me to gain more weight than try to get to 265, and I was about 260. And uh, when I was about three months in, I, I didn't look good. I had, I had a little, I had a little tummy on me at that point, but there, cause I pounded, I put on that weight in three months. But so going into that, I going into the first game, I'm, I'm expecting to be told something until I go to go to find, find one of the coaches or something like that and ask like what, what's going on. And I ended up like noticing on a piece of paper and just said like red shirts and like listed all of us off. I was like, Oh, it was like the day before the first game or like two days before the first game. So I was like, no one's going to tell me or like no one's going to tell all of us. Cause a lot of us were thinking like, are we going to play? Like everyone was saying we need it. I mean, obviously, you know, I know recruiting tactics, coaches are going to tell you, Nate, they're going to play you as soon as you get there. But I mean, I, I, I legit thought I was, I was going to, and then I saw that and I was like, Oh, well, are we just not going to be told or were we just supposed to assume we were. So that kind of, that kind of started the carousel of just, things that that kind of happened here that that are very unique in my situation that people are going to continue to scratch their head at about my stats and different things like that is just you know it, that was kind of the start of the craziness where it's like I was like oh okay so this is happening now I have to redshirt figure this out and then go into next season and different things like that and so 
going forward from there, I just made it apparent that I know I wanted to get my degree as fast as I could. I got my degree in three years. I had different ideas of what to do prior to this season, this past season of if I was going to transfer or not or what I wanted to do. I already had my degree where I could go, who would I still know somewhere else or what if I even wanted to. Because one of the things is when you spend four years somewhere or three and a half years somewhere, it's kind of hard to leave it. Whenever you know you, you, have, you have friends here, you have, you have friends on and off the team. In, in the school, university, yeah, like my, my parents bought a house here. They, whenever I committed here, June 13th, 2015, my parents said, we want to buy a house in Lubbock because we don't want to have to get a hotel every time we come there. Because hotels here are crazy. Like, they'll, they'll be $500 a night or something crazy like that. Wow. And it's, it, yeah, I know. People love their football out here. It's fun. And so my, my parents, literally, they bought a three-bedroom, three-bathroom house here. And so they could bring their friends and they, cause we all, we, we get tickets to games. They could bring their friends and they could come and hang out and have a place to call their own. And it's all decked out red. Everything's red and black in there. My face is everywhere. <laughs> my numbers everywhere. It's just like, just, they, they came here. They loved it here. My family likes it here. We all like it here. And so it's like, not something that I was like, God, I, I was like, my, me thinking like, wow, I want to leave loving. No, it was, that wasn't the decision. It was more just, okay, I got to think of what I can do to better myself. And so there was, there was a different carousel of different things that happened. I can continue on if you'd like me to about the carousel of things, but it's pretty unique. Yeah, well, I mean, you don't have to, uh, you know, divulge anything you don't want to, but I, I, I definitely wanted to ask about just the, the transition from Coach Kingsbury to Coach Wells because uh, obviously it's the last year that you just wrapped up here. Uh, mm-hmm. Coach Wells comes in with, a, you know, some success at Utah State. So – what, yes. um, you know, if you just sort of compare his style to, to Coach Kingsbury, you know, what would you say um, j- just how the two sort of, you know, compare? Uh, I, th- I think you look at it as different eras of coaches, not necessarily by age, but different t- eras of style. So, I mean, Coach Kingsbury is kind of a – he kind of innovated his own style of coaching in the sense of he's a laid-back guy, laissez-faire, lets everyone handle their business, goes about his business, and – People want to follow him because he's thinking, like, this is how – I'm going to let you know exactly how I'm going to do this, and this is our plan. And he lays down the groundwork, and you're going to follow it. He, 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 you can have a cool conversation with him. I remember I was working out in the weight room one time. I would always work out on Sundays. Like, I'd be the only person in there. I'd crank up the music as loud as I could because I was the only one in there. And I was taking pre-workout, and chalk was everywhere. I love chalk. I am, I'm trying to create – I'm creating my own brand right now. We can get into that in another story if you want to talk about that later. It's fun. But chalk's everywhere. Chalk's flying. And then Kingsbury comes in there, and it's like 5.30 on Sunday. He's like, dude, what are you doing here? I was like, getting juicy. <laughs> I was like, I'm just lifting. I'm having fun. <laughs> and he was like, do you take a lot of pre-workout? I was like, I always do. <laughs> and he was just laughing, but I had my phone set up to record one of my my, my set of three power cleans or whatever I was doing. And uh, it was funny because we were just sitting there, all, like on, on the phone, you can't hear us talking, but like we just paused for a second for like three minutes. We we're just talking and like just about anything, about pre workout lifting and stuff like that. It, it's fun. I mean, I even, I, yeah, we'll get to the brand story. Don't let me forget that. I'll tell you about that in, later, but it's pretty cool. And so we were just talking. It's like, you know, that's a, it was a laissez-faire kind of, kind of style where he's like, you know, wow, this guy's handling his business on a Sunday. I was like, this is what I like to do. I mean, I may have been the only one in there power cleaning and bashing my head in the bars and playing death metal, but it was fun. And so it, it was just a fun time. And, you know, he has just that light, the laid back kind of coaching style. And then Coach Wells comes in. I've, I've kind of experienced both. Because Coach Witt, the old strength coach, he was obviously he was a Green Beret in the military, and he he had a very unique style of coaching that people have never really seen. It's very commanding, and you 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 have to be in line like that. Like we would do jumping jacks, and they were or he called them side straddle hops. I was like, what? The first time we heard that, no one knew what the hell was going on. But uh, we did side straddle hops, and if you were even that much out of line, like. A, a hair out of line, we were starting over, and people were getting so mad at each other. So that kind of – and I've had that influence my, my entire high – or my entire football career from like Little League. All my coaches I had – two uh, a coach that was in the Air Force, two Marines, and uh, an Army. So they were all – I always had a lot of military influence in my, in my, in my football career, and I, I love America. God bless America. Best country in the world. But Coach – 
Coach Wells comes in, he kind of presents the same kind of style of authoritarian. Like, he's like, I, this is how I want to run things. If you have questions, by all means, come and ask me. But this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. And it's, it's on schedule. It's on pace. And you're, you're doing it immediately whenever you're asked. Whenever you couldn't. And it's just like, you know, different types of guys. Like, that's kind of been – Coach Wells' style has kind of been the style you'd see with a lot of coaches back in the – let's say the eighties and nineties where they were, it was hard nosed ball. That's what he wants. And he wants hard nosed ball and you're going to play that for him. And you're going to give him what you got and heart. And you're going to be a tough, tough, tough guy. And you're going to, and I mean, it's not like you're not tough with Kingsbury, but you're just going to continue going forward with a more structured, uh, hard nosed plan to win. With Kingsbury, you're going for a innovative, unique, fast paced plan to win. Awesome. Um, Really well put. I, I uh, honestly didn't know too much about Coach Wells, but uh, so, so thanks. Uh, that's uh, really interesting about how much um, it's going to change the culture and even the, the type of athlete that they might look to sort of bring into that. Um, it, it's, for sure. Uh, it, it's a huge, huge change. Uh, and obviously oh, yeah. something that Texas Tech is going to be going through for years to, to sort of mm -hmm. have him sort of get everything uh, the way that he's going to want to go. Yeah, very true. I mean, the, un the uniqueness in the athlete also is kind of also the, the – I guess you could say mindset of the athlete. You have different guys that are wanting to achieve different things, different players that fit different systems. I mean, I, I, I talked to Coach Patterson one time, and this, this was a kind of difficult conversation. And it's just – this is another part of the, the, the baggage or the carousel, as you want to call it, of things that went on. It was in the – it was one of the weeks during the season I was coming in there. I was like, I, I didn't quite understand what was going on in, in my role and stuff like that. I was trying to figure out, like, you know – we had, all, we had all these plans, things I was going to do. They kind of, they wanted me at this weight. I'm working at it. And I knew I could play something else other than the nose guard or defensive tackle where that's not where I was suited for, but I continued to do it every day. And, I mean, I went hard at it every single day. I mean, you can ask Coach Randolph at 265, I was falling out at nose guard. And as, hard, as hard as it is facing a 600-pound double team, I was fighting in there. I mean, it's not like – my thing, I, I, I'd hold my ground, I'd play hard, and I'd make plays. I mean, in the inside hole and everything, or inside run, I'd, I'd do it, and it was fun. But I knew I could play outside linebacker. I knew I could play linebacker. And we were, we were having difficulties. It would continue that. He would be getting on to the guys for doing the same things over and over and over that they – that that's not the part of the game plan, not a part of the playbook. And so I went, I went there, I'm like, Coach, like, what's going on? And I asked him, I was like, can, is there any way that I can have a shot to do this stuff? I said, because, you know, I'm not necessarily getting – much on the D line, it's not. It's not and he's like, well, he he said, I don't, you don't necessarily fit on my defense. And he's like, you know, our linebackers aren't two forty forty pound guy. I was two forty five or about that or two forty when I walked into his office asking him. I mean, I was I was fluctuating it. Wait, it was it was difficult, but he said, you know, we don't have two hundred forty pound linebackers, two hundred fifty pound linebackers. He's like, I want guys being two twenty, two sixteen, and he he kind of runs like his linebackers are almost all safeties kind of like that it's like a unique way of playing the defense that you have a lot of quicker faster guys I guess you would say instead of a like you look at Baylor or like you're even a big 10 school you got big guy big stick linebackers in the back and they're shooting gaps at 255 you know you know they're they're you're lighter on your feet and it's it's he'd always put a premium on coverage that's what it was and so and go from there, put a premium on coverage, and then you get to the passer when you get to the passer. We rush the passers. Coach Randolph would say we always rush the passer. And so it was just Bob, I was essentially told I didn't necessarily fit. He didn't have a spot for me, a fit for me on the defense. And I was like, okay. It was one of those kinds of things. You shake hands and you get up and leave the office and go about your business. And I, I was just kind of I was kind of confused as the like how how you couldn't find something to do with a six four, two hundred and forty five, fifty pound guy that can do what I can do and it's just necessarily that they had a different they had a different vision for it and so that's going to recruit different guys that's going to like coach Randolph he loves recruiting guys that are that are like a nose guard that's like 5'10 six foot and stocky guy that can fight in the trenches like that I mean I'm long lengthy fast and twitchy on the inside but that's I'm I'm, I'm not 310 so right but and then, so, I mean, yeah, they're definitely going to look to recruit different types of style guys. And it's just, uh, I mean, it depends on the offense, depends on the scheme that you're looking at. You got to find where you think you're going to be utilized the most. You got to find coaches that run schemes that are going to fit to your, if you're a recruit, find coaches that are going to 
be able to utilize you in different ways. And it's just a matter of, I just didn't feel as I was utilized or looked at properly or like evaluated properly. Like they said, like they said was going to happen. I was going to be evaluated. I think I was just kind of told to put on some weight and play nose guard whenever I could have done so many different things. And whenever I bring up the question of it, they just say, you don't fit. Right. It, like I broke your puzzle piece. You know, it's just like, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I don't fit in this puzzle, but you can jam me in somewhere because I know I can do it. <laughs> and it, and it's just tough because you've already talked about how much you, you like the school. You didn't want to do mm-hmm. the grad transfer route. So it's just sort of like you're kind of put in a spot where if you're – you're going to be there. You, you kind of have to weather the storm. And I mean, it was yeah. a, a hell of a storm. So, I mean, through all the, you know, this tumultuous sort of uh, mm-hmm. experience that you had on yeah. the field, um, you, you know, it sounds like the, the, you're coming out the other end with at least a brand idea. No. Yeah. One of the things is uh, it kind of started in high school. It's pretty funny. Me and my best friends, uh, we, in high school, the one of my, he's the center. He was our center in high school. His name's Skylar Rodriguez little dude he was about five eight so that's that's he was he was our center at five eight he was like three ten at that point but he's lost a ton of weight since then he he uh he went to austin college and played ball there for a year but uh we were in powerlifting again i love i love lifting i think it's i think it's awesome it's one of the fun most fun things you can do is go in the weight room throw chalk everywhere and play the loudest music you can and uh be obnoxious and stuff like that but so we were in powerlifting and we'd always use excessive amounts of chalk it was it was so fun. Excessive amounts of chalk. <laughs> we go to powerlifting meets. It was kind of fun because we go into powerlifting meets like we'd be decked out in American flag headbands, and suits, and some of the American flag converse and stuff. And so there was a we, I don't know how it came up, but we just kind of came up with this idea that we were just talking. We were like, we want to get shirts made, and I actually do have shirts made. It's on my Instagram. I have a shirt, uh, my undershirt that I wear because. It was when my buddy, I, he actually broke his ankle when he was playing for Austin College and shattered that thing. And so, but he, we got shirts made that finally, we finally got shirts made that said what we wanted to on them and said, chalk them up. And I have a hat that says chalk them up. And it's, I wore it. It had my dad 88 on the back. He put my nickname on it. It said the machine. And um, I, I wore it under my jersey every single game for the past three and a half years. And, um, and it's just kind of funny is it started off with us out of powerlifting meet just playing with chalk and we threw chalk at each other or something like that before a deadlift because we were just being obnoxious but like we could because we were we were running those meets we were having fun we were killing it and we just kind of just started yelling chalk them up at each other and it was really fun and now i even got coach kingsbury a hoodie whenever he got me my t-shirt i got coach kingsbury a white hoodie so i'll cut it off like belichick i'll say chalk them up on it it says king and 16 on the back so, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny. It's just like, you know, for the past four years, I've, I've, I've talked about it with my teammates, all my teammates. They're like, yeah, dude, if you ever get things going, like they, they've all said they trade in my gym when I open it. And it's just, I think I sit around, a lot, of my, a lot of my free time is spent learning about the anatomy of the body, how the body moves, lifting, how to, prepare, how to strengthen the body, how to get the body essentially even ready for the pro day, combines and stuff like that muscle memory how to confuse the muscle how to <clears throat> recruit more muscle to specific areas how to train specific areas that people don't necessarily think about all the time a lot of people are thinking like okay we just need to get stronger but there's a lot of small things that you got to handle to get stronger you, you can't have a strong bicep without the strong heads of the muscle so you have to do different movements to take care of the lower head and the upper head of the muscle in order like same thing you can't have a strong like if you're if you're lacking in one leg you gotta be able to like strengthen your left leg you gotta be able to get your right leg strengthened to match the to match the same levels and there's different ways of training that you can do to utilize this or to accomplish this and it's just got to be very unique and innovative for me to kind of make a difference between myself and a different in other gyms in the country because anyone can say well i can go to this gym i'm like what is different what's unique about yours it would be the style of training and how to accomplish what you're getting that what you want it's going to be a different road but you gotta understand it's going to take time and some of the things look goofy when you do them but it's unique and it's it and it, it shows whenever you actually get to a combine or a pro day or a show or a meet or anything that you're going to be different and you're going to be better and it's i i just know with the with the method of training that me and him have kind of come up with we have a sketchbook of the, like the layout of the gym and different stuff like that and it's really unique, so I just think that would be fun one day to be able to open my own gym and get that going from there. 
have a have a restaurant next to it. My girlfriend gave me the name idea. Eat them up. I was like, that's a great idea for like a <laughs> for like a uh, a protein house kind of place where we're serving steaks and greens. You know, love but it. But it's kind of fun. So that that's come out of the all of them said they come train with me. I was like, come on, I'm ready. That's great. I, I can't, I, the, the chalk them up just seems so easy to picture, but it, it, in, you know, as fun as that is to, to actually have a, a legit idea in something mm-hmm. concrete that, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, regardless of how the NFL path works out, right? Like even if you become Tom Brady and you play for 20 years, you're yeah. still at the end of the day, you know, going to have to have a life after football. So the fact that Correct. you have the sports management mm-hmm. degree, you already have ideas about the gym and this brand. I mean, it sounds yeah. like no matter what happens, you're going to come out on top. Thank you. Yeah. I've always understood there's a point in every player's life where like it's for any sport, but I use football, obviously it's, there's a point in every football player's life where football gives up on you or you give up on football and you never know when that's going to happen. It's something that you ought to be prepared for. And that's the blessing of being able to come to this school and get a, a be on scholarship and go through school and get a, get a degree and be able to go forward and continue to contribute to society and bring innovative ideas to society. And it's just a matter of you understand that, there, there's more out there than football and you love the game as much as you want to love it. But it's at the end of the day, it's not going to always going to love you back. It's kind of like I was watching the West side versus the world. It's a documentary with uh, Louis Simmons, the guy that runs West side, uh, West side gym or West side um, powerlifting gym, West side barbell. And um, like a lot of the guys that are his power lifters, they would say when Louis's done with you, Louis's done with you. He loves you to death. But if you're not if you're not a world record holder for him anymore, if you're not this or you're not that for him, he's done with you. It's the same thing, football. If if you're not what fo- if you're not what football wants or needs, it's done with you. If, if it can love you and you can look back at the memories you've had with it, but it's never gonna love you the same. You know, once it's done, it's gotta find the next guy. It's gonna find it's gonna find the next Tom Brady. It's gonna find the next Lamar Jackson as soon as it can. Or it's gonna find the next Dwight Franey. Next the Forrest Buckner. And all these guys, they're gonna, it's gonna find the next one. It's gonna, you can love it as much as you want, but at the end of the day, it's gonna say, hey, I've taken my toll on you. You can go about your business. Thanks for the time, you know. So you gotta be able to have good backup plans. I've had backup plan. I have A, B, C, D, and F. Like I have everything <laughs> going through my head, just because you gotta be prepared for what can happen. And <clears throat> I'm prepared for anything. That's that's what I understood going through this process too. You never know when ball ends. Sometimes it does for some people, and sometimes it, it, it can go a lot longer for others. So, yeah, you got to go with it every single day and just take – you just can't take each, any day for granted what you're doing. Definitely. Um, and, and, you know, uh, Houston, we're kind of getting to the end of our time here. So, before I jump into gauntlet, into the gauntlet to wrap this thing up, okay. I, I just want to ask, though, you know, the XFL is popping up. I, I mean, did mm-hmm. you ever at any point sort of consider, like, hey, you know, is this a better route? Or if, you know, the first pass to the – the NFL, like, is the CFL or if, you know, the XFL is a second season, is, is anything else on the table besides the National Football League? I, it's, it's a matter of once, once we go through combine and pro day and stuff like that, we'll, we'll evaluate those options and figure out what's going to be the best route to take. Um, I mean, it's all different levels of ball. They're all good, the high professional levels of ball. So you're playing somewhere and that's going to be fun. And so it's more, it's more right now. You, you, you just take every, if, if something offers, something comes in, you take every offer with a grain of salt, you evaluate and then you go from there. Got it. All right. Well, as alluded to, I have the gauntlet for you. I've got a couple quick hitter questions so we can wrap this up. I need to know what's most important, even if I'm pretty sure I know the answer already, what's most important in winning? Is it having the number one offense or the number one defense? defense wins championships offense wins games fair enough now <laughs> you, you mentioned Dwight Freeney and DeForest Buckner so I did want to ask though you know over the years considering that you know you had the background as defensive end did you have guys in particular that you were watching film on to model your game after oh I, I'd always watch old school players I just brought those two they were first that came to my mind but I loved watching Deacon Jones Deacon nice. Jones was one of my favorite players ever uh, I liked Ray Nitschke, who was a linebacker back in the day. He, he was mean, mean dude. And uh, I, I loved watching those guys. I love watching old football. So Deacon Jones, he was one of the guys I always think, you know, play like him or play like Lawrence Taylor. You know, a pack of wild dogs, as they always say. Like, that's how you have to play. Love it. Uh, now, do you have a, a favorite football memory? Oh, there, there's a lot of them. But uh, one of them, I just remember – this past season, it was just one of the things, like, you come in the locker room, 
after a win or after a loss, I mean, it's, it's not necessarily one specific memory, but you get to hang out with your guys and you kind of just see how everyone copes with things differently. I mean, if I, it'd be difficult for me to pick out one specific memory, but it just, you know, after games, win or loss, those are kind of your favorite memories because you 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 remember what you went through and you remember what you got, what you went through to get there and then what you have to do going forward because it's just, it's the same cycle, but it's different every time. Yeah. So it's almost like the, the camaraderie and the brotherhood plus the mm -hmm. element of like the growth and the struggle. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Very I mean, cool. that's, that's, I mean, that's a memory in itself, you know? Yeah. Oh Yeah. <clears throat> Now, uh, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, pre-workout and chalk, but do you have any other pre-game workouts uh, or, I'm sorry, pre-game rituals that, that you would uh, stick to? Every day, every time I'd go out there, I'd, I'd, I'd stretch, get warmed up. Uh, I mean, when we – I'd, I'd always pray in the end zone before doing everything like that. I'd always want to throw the ball around in pre-game just because I thought it was fun. But, uh, you know, in the locker room, I'd always, I'd always pray. I'd drink, like, three bangs or three rains before every game. <laughs> I just – I'm always hyped up, but it's like, you know, I was kind of always calm in there too. So I'd always have to listen to, there's this one song that I'd always want to listen to. Uh, one, I'd listen to Three Little Birds by Bob Marley, which is kind of unique. You don't necessarily think you'd hear someone listen to reggae while they're getting ready for a game. But that's my favorite song. I always have to listen to Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. There's two other songs I would, but that was my number one song, Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. I'd have to listen to that to essentially get ready for the game. Just one of the things that was – just it's in your head and you're thinking about it and then as we run out of the tunnel since day one I'd always run and jump in the stands because I thought it was fun I want to be that guy <laughs> so I was like I'm gonna be the guy to jump in the stands <laughs> it seems like so. you, there's so many parts of the game that you just enjoyed it and you did it because mm -hmm. you loved it yes yes that's uh -huh. that's what's difficult nowadays you find guys that they're they're playing for the paycheck not for the love of the game even though the game might not love you later you know Right. But, I mean, the paycheck's also really nice. So, whoever wants to pay me, that's where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, what, what would you say is most important? Is it the, the players on the team or is it the scheme? Players on the team. If you have players that don't fit the scheme, then you're not going to be able to get anywhere. If, you don't, and if your scheme can't mesh with the players that you have, it's not going to work. You know, you gotta have got you got to be able to accommodate and take time to work with what you have. If you have absolutely, something that absolutely. doesn't fit in with you, you you work to modify it, but if the modification is unreal, you you change the scheme to fit the player. Got it, and agreed by the way. Uh, so, lastly, and I think it's most important, what is the best piece of advice that you would give if you see you know a seventeen uh, year old kid that you know is recruited or even not recruited, but you know sees where you are and says you know hey you know how do I you know navigate this space, get the best out of the next four years? Like just what would you give them for guidance? Uh, one, you're doing it for an education. If you're going on a scholarship, you're doing it for an education. Get your degree. Your degree lasts a lifetime. No one can take that degree away from you. It's in writing. It's in a data. It's everywhere. You have a degree. So work to get your degree. Make that one of your number one priorities. And just never, never, ever take a rep off. Never think that you're, you're complacent. Don't be complacent. Don't think that you're where you're at. Don't think you're so great. Don't think you're or you're not that great. You know, you have to have a, you have to take your highs with the lows and be able to stay consistent and understand what you have to do to get to that point. You can't take reps off. You can't take days off. You have to give everything you have every single day. I said in a video like a couple of years ago, you can't be the guy that's given 75% when everyone else is given a hundred percent, you know, someone's going to pass you up. Someone's going to come behind you. So you're constantly given a hundred percent. You're going to be ready for your opportunity. And then the other thing is like, you know, college, Find where you not necessarily don't think about the school, obviously, or I mean, don't think about the, like the, the program, like the scheme. Obviously, you need to think about the scheme and where you're going to be playing in. But think about the city and think about the school. And are you going to be happy there for four years of your life? You know, I could, I could think back and you'd, you'd ask if I had any regrets. It's like, you know, if I went somewhere else, maybe I wouldn't have been as happy as I've been here. You know, but there have been times, there's always times where you may be unhappy, things that you want to change. But I've been happy and loving for the past four years. I've made a lot of friends. I've made a lot of connections. I've made a lot of, I've met a lot of people and it's been great. So find somewhere that you're going to be happy for four or five years of your life. Awesome. Great advice. Uh, well, Houston, thank you so much for taking the time uh, for everyone. I know that on Instagram, you are at Houston Miller 88. Uh, where cool. else can people follow you? Uh, Twitter, Houston Miller 88, Facebook, Houston Miller. I have a LinkedIn profile. If anyone wants to add me on that. If anyone's searching for some jobs later on, y'all can find me on there. Uh, 
yeah, so you follow me on there. I, I post stuff pretty much almost every other day, workout videos, uh, information. I'm a, I'm a pretty I'm, – I, I, I credit myself. I'm a pretty smart guy on – sports and nutrition and lifting and working out and getting bigger, faster, stronger. So if anyone ever has questions, you can shoot them my way. I'm, I'm glad to talk. I love talking. I can make up workout plans for people. I can sell those out to people. So follow me on there. Follow my journey. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for having me on uh, the show. It's been great. It's been a fun time, man. Thank you very much, Steve. Oh, thank you for taking the time. And again, best of luck as you start to really get into the preparation and, you know, hopefully there are big things coming on the NFL side. And if not, we know there's going to be big things coming no matter what. So again, very best. Awesome. Thank you very much. Have a good one.